But before we get out of here, let's check out this purple magnificent beast. That's what you look for. If you see something like that, run away. <laughs> Even if you see a little bit of a indention or some of that pitting, that's where it's just been slapping off. That's for both or what? Uh, 65 for both. So 45 just for the truck, it looks like. 565,000 miles. Uh, doesn't really say if it's been rebuilt or not. It's All oh, right. I'll see you later. Right, love you. Me too. So if you clicked on this video today in December of 2022 or anytime in the future, you're probably looking to buy a truck. Probably thinking about getting out there and leasing on somebody or starting your own authority. Both are great paths to have more freedom in trucking, uh, but it does take a lot of responsibility. So I'm going to give you a little bit of minor pointers on what you're going to be looking for questions i had when i was in cdl school four years ago uh, right here in greenville south carolina and i wanted to know what motor was good what truck is most reliable what truck's the best to go for fuel economy what's the the motors you want to get that kind of stuff so um i started with one truck it was a volvo vnl 670 and that was a great truck and i went with the cummins motor and uh, we'll talk about that truck it's actually right here and uh, that one's still running on the road today. Has sold it about 150,000 miles on it now since I sold it to a, a friend from this channel right here. So as you can see, we got that one after that. Uh, some more room in the back, not aerodynamic, not great for, for fuel economy, but an uh, uh, icon truck for, for trucking. So also a Cummins, uh, also a manual transmission. That was an 18 speed. That Volvo was a 10 speed. So we'll talk about that kind of stuff um, over this video. But right now I'm going to pop the hood on this thing. We kind of talk about the three different motors that I would recommend you get. This is the first. It's a Cummins. It's going to be a red motor. There are also Mack trucks that have red motors, so don't be fooled. Look for the 870, 871, the Cummins ISX, which this is right here, or the X15, which is the next generation newest one. And, of course, you're going to want to run a good oil in it also. We run the Shell Rotella T5, um, and we'll talk more about that later on kind of engine wear and what goes on behind that cover right there. That'll be later in the video. But this is the motor I chose because um, it's everywhere. Anybody can work on it. Parts are, are readily available. Um, the two other motors I would go with would be a Detroit or a Caterpillar. Now, the only thing about that is the Caterpillar, when you have to rebuild it, is a lot more expensive for the parts, for the whole thing. Forty to $50,000. This motor is going to be thirty to thirty-five, forty if you do a new turbo, different things. I just rebuilt this, and it cost me about thirty-three thousand all the parts new radiator new turbo new injectors all that kind of stuff so that's an in frame is what that's called but detroit is a great motor also i just don't know much about it dd15 um, and all the numbers are the um, number of liters they have so like 15 liters this one's also an isx 15 15 liters uh old detroit's like a 12.7 uh is a 12.7 liter so series 60 you'll hear that a lot for detroit um, but i don't know anything about them i do know the cummins because i've taken apart two of these now exact same motor <laughs> For this truck and for the last truck, but that oil you just saw is a big part of it. Using a quality oil like Shell Rotella T5 is what I'm using right now. And uh, that'll keep you from getting the wear and tear you'll see later on in this video from that motor. So we'll drop this hood. We'll go talk some more. Maybe get some insight on new dealerships and kind of show you different places you can look for these trucks. Um, Facebook Marketplace, Truck Paper. I'd never heard of the, well, I'm, Facebook Marketplace wasn't around when I was looking for a truck four years ago. Um... But truck paper was, so we'll talk about that a little bit too, and kind of what you're going to search in there and what you're going to look for. But first, let's get over to the Pete store and see some Peterbilts. And while we head there, we'll talk a little bit about um, miles on a truck, motor, uh, longevity, that kind of stuff, all that stuff that that oil will help out with. Um, keeping your motor running smoothly and keeping the oil from breaking down a good quality oil is very important but number of hours uh 20,000 to 25,000 hours is going to be a big thing on a motor so that's right about the in frame time when you need to rebuild it that 5,000 miles between 20 and 25,000 that's just when they go nowadays especially with the emissions and stuff like that so or even the older ones but um and also with miles you're going to be looking if you're getting into the seven eight hundred thousand miles that's probably also when you're going to be needing an end frame so a lot of these big companies will resell these trucks at about 500,000 550,000 miles sometimes into 600,000 miles if they have not been rebuilt 
that's not a red it's a pretty big red flag both of mine were in the 600,000 miles when I bought them and both of them had to be rebuilt within a year well the first one lasted about a year and a half this one was within a year and I had to do I could have done minor work to re-get it back on the road but uh, I did the whole thing because I just wanted to have peace of mind but so th those are the mileages so if you see a truck with 900,000 miles and it has zero paperwork saying it was overhauled or, or um, rebuilt then don't or in frames what they say it is called then don't uh, I wouldn't go for that one unless you were getting it dirt cheap and you were expecting to have the money to rebuild it so think about those things uh, but the hours is the big thing another thing about the hours is um, if this truck doesn't have an APU which is an auxiliary power unit it's a little another three-cylinder diesel motor usually like ours has a green APU green APU.com and when you're sleeping at night, if it's cold or hot outside, or if, even if it's nice and you just want the hum of the motor to get, put you to sleep, I like white noise, uh, that keeps your motor from running all night. Because a lot of guys don't have APUs and they will run their truck nonstop. So see you're in the cold uh, winter months, you're up in the Northeast or you're up in the Midwest, and it's freezing cold all the time, you're gonna be running your truck nonstop. So that's just hours clock, just keeps going, keeps going, keep going. With an APU, you can turn that on and save your hours on your motor, save that wear and tear and friction. Um, even though the oil helps keep it down, it just it wears out your motor. So think about that. APU is something you're going to want to look for that the truck already has. My Volvo that I bought already had an APU. I knew that just made sense to me. Like why, why not have why idle the truck all the time when you can shut that uh, engine off and, and idle with the APU. So this truck had one on it when I first got it. We put the green APU on there. Way more efficient. It's the highest um, BTUs blowing motor. APU on the market also and it's really nice and cold so keeps your battery charged keeps you cool and comfort while you sleep or while you're just hanging out waiting for the next load so let's get on the road and here we are this is the Pete store so this isn't going to be your go to for buying a used truck to kind of get into the market but this is a good place to get some parts sometimes get some service and this is somewhere i'm going to use to kind of show you guys um the difference between an mx motor uh like mx13 and a cummins which i do not recommend getting a mx which is a max force um just strictly because of the network they have I'm sure they work on them here parts are not as readily readily available um that's a nice flat top right there so there are all the uh these are all the trucks that pull the cars because we have bmw across the street so front tire on that I guess just a spare nice purple one right there these are all Peterbilt's um, side exhaust because they don't want to put the exhaust on the cars looks like they have a 579 up there on the little pad that green one but we'll see if they have a max force neither one of these ones I'm kind of show you what to look for it's gonna be a black motor um, let's see what they got and that's 85 right there we live in South Carolina and it's actually BMW right across the way there all right come with me well they're both locked up but we have a few more over here I might just grab a salesman to try and show what a mx looks like and what you don't want to get there might be a lot cheaper on the price but there's a reason because the network of people to work on them like this place can work on a cummins i don't know about detroit as much but they will definitely work on a cummins motor um caterpillar you gotta really find your own shop for that because the reason with caterpillar guys is they don't make them anymore for commercial trucks once emissions started coming out which is another thing we'll talk about after we find an mx motor uh, emissions played a big part in caterpillar kind of saying we're out of the uh commercial truck industry so this is going to be a peterbilt 579 guys and uh i don't know if it has the pack r or the uh, it has the x15 so this is the motor the next generation the uh, newest cummins it's uh, very much like my motor in that w9 you just saw um same common rail fuel system but this one's pretty dang new. I, don't, I think this one might be brand new. <laughs> Doesn't look like it has much dirt on it at all. But this is a 579. I don't know the price tag on this, but this is definitely going to be up there in the in the hundreds, probably not 200, but up there. Really nicely done interior. But this is called an Aero truck, guys. Has the good old digital dash. Plenty of room, double bunk, all that good stuff. But uh, gonna be a pretty penny for this thing. So, no CB yet in there. But that's the X15. And you'll be looking for a little black box usually back here. Green APU actually has their fan and condenser inside their unit, but there'll be a black box like this over here. 
And if it has that, it typically means it has an APU on it. But the green APU, you'll also see it right here on the side of the rail. It'll be a box. I'll show you my green APU here. That's what it looks like on a, on a truck. So if it has that, you're really gonna lower the hours on it. This one's brand new, probably has zero hours, zero miles, but that's a 579. I'm gonna walk down the line, try to find you a Max Force. But that Cummins motor, I am partial to it because I have it in my truck. I had it in both my trucks and I know how to work on it. But other motors out there are good motors and maybe one day this 579 or this uh, Max Force motor will be having a better network and be a better truck uh, motor and have more um, network of dealerships that can work on it and shops that work on it. But right now it's just, it doesn't have the network. So stick with the Cummins of Detroit or if you're gonna go old, stick with the, uh, the good old uh, Caterpillar. So 23 hours and 984, not even a thousand miles yet in this thing. So they still have brand new trucks out here. Maybe it was demoed, maybe, I don't know what it was used for, but they're a good looking truck. Uh, but their aero truck is what this is. The plastic truck, aerodynamic, some good looking headlights, but that's what those are called. So let's try and find one with the Max Force engine. I think this one has it. I looked under in the wheel well, we shall see. Yes, so this is what you're gonna look at. You're gonna see Packar branding on it. This one's used. Uh, great motor I've heard. I heard guys that live and die by them, but if you wanna stay in business, you're gonna look for anything that's gonna keep you on the road. And sometimes maybe finding parts for that motor is not gonna be as easy, or no one's gonna be able to work on it or plug into the computer, that kind of stuff. So that's why we say Detroit Cummins Caterpillar, not in that specific order, but that kind of stuff. So let's look inside this one too. This one is a flat, uh, it's not really a flat top, but smaller sleeper, Got a little ding in there. It's not right. But pretty good condition. Has carpet, huh? You don't see many trucks of carpet these days. It is a manual transmission. That's something else we're going to talk about. I'm not very well versed in the, uh, but this is going to be your living quarters. So you got to make sure it's going to be comfortable for you. Um, not very well versed in the automatic transmissions, but the manuals, you can see it's a 10 speed. That is probably the most common. That's what was in my Volvo at Eaton Fuller. Uh, my 18 speed is. It's pretty common also in heavy haul trucks mostly, but um, the manual is the only reason I say get that. Uh, and it has a different endorsement on your license when you're signing up for CDL school. You have to actually test in a manual truck to have a manual endorsement to be able to drive one. That's kind of a dying breed these days, but the automatics, I've heard the Volvo has a good one. I've heard the International had kind of a um, electronics problem more than an uh, actual mechanical problem so i would just research the heck out of whatever automatic transmission you're going to get and also for some people they have a automated transmission so it's actually a manual transmission but it has a box down here and it'll actually shift it the manual for you uh, some people have that i don't i wouldn't get that either because replacing your transmission or if anything goes wrong with it in, inside that box that's just one more thing that can fail it's electronic i would rather just be able to shift it myself and Switching these out, they're everywhere. Eaton Fuller 10 speeds are everywhere. So I would definitely go with a manual, easy to replace. Even 18 speeds are pretty common out there. But um, yeah, definitely, if you can, the best way to be successful out here is to have a manual, I think, for longevity and ease of repair. But yeah, that's a pack car motor. That's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be a uh, gray, dark kind of color. What's that little actuator right there on the turbo? It's kind of cool but not tried and true, that's the only problem. So maybe get a good deal on it. Maybe that one's five grand less than a, a Cummins or 10 grand less than a Cummins motor. Still try and get the Cummins. That's what you're gonna wanna do. All right, we gotta close this hood. They got these cool little uh, release things you gotta do. So the hood doesn't just go back, you gotta do that. Some of them have like a pull bar and then you can put the hood back down. But I appreciate you Peter Belt for showing us the pack uh, the pack our motor. MX-13 is the most common. And uh, yeah, let's go talk to some people about financing and we'll do some, uh, voiceover and show you kind of what I look for when I'm on truck paper or when I'm on Facebook marketplace but before we get out of here let's check out this purple magnificent beast 389 see how it clears the top of that racks just perfectly heavy hood let it get down all right let's look at this motor okay another pack car motor and I'm not saying it's the worst motor in the world don't go with it at all if you're gonna finance and you're gonna get a warranty and you're planning on not keeping the truck forever uh, and you don't want to do your own maintenance kind of thing which is another thing I want to talk about, like doing your own maintenance and knowing how these motors works and being able to fix little things that might break is night and day to keep you in this industry or not. So right now my truck's actually down, but for my trailer, nothing to do with the motor or the truck itself. But uh, if you're gonna go warranty and you're gonna do all that, then it might be the motor for you, who knows? But uh, for me, it's just the ease of everyone being able to work on it. 
Got these cool key fobs. This one is brand new. Let's see. 14 hours, 135 miles. Digital dash. Nice looking truck. Another thing you're gonna notice about these hood trucks, they call it. When they have a squared off hood like that, it's not an aerodynamic truck. There's really limited room between them, uh, between the seats. You'll notice a lot of the aero trucks have a lot more room in there. But this is a, you get a free hat, whatever. Back window, typical uh, 389. But for me, see the, uh, the height, I won't be able to stand up in there. I'm 6'5". Uh, the W9 was the way to go for me for all the room that it gives you. But these, this is a very popular truck right here. Um, but just not the room. I wish that's kind of cool. It's probably removable. I don't have that in my truck. But also, I, I need that room to walk through. Yeah, so we got a, another 10-speed, it looks like. Yeah, because it has just a, well, it has a splitter on the side. Um, maybe 13-speed, I'm not sure. There you go. Beautiful truck, though. Smells like brand new. You still get some analog gauges. But this is a car hauler, so you're going to have that. And you're going to have the shorter um, sleeper. But uh, typically, a lot of them have that short sleeper. Uh, there's nothing that has a tall one like the W9 does. So, All right, we checked out the purple Magnificent Beauty with the Packard motor. Let's get our little lever going again so we can close the hood. There we go. We don't, they don't have that on the Kenworth. Maybe the, the newer ones they do, but not mine. All right. Thank you, purple. So now we talked about the three motors you should get, the two being the Detroit and the Cummins, and probably what not to get if you're buying a used truck and you're not getting a warranty. But if you are, maybe get a maybe get the Packard motor. I've heard it's a great motor, but the network is what we're talking about. So let's get over to uh, Packard Financial now, down the road a little bit, and talk about what we look for in truck paper and uh, face of marketplace. But before we get over to uh, Packard Financial, I had to see if my friend was here and. She is working and she owns the only jailbreak 900 horsepower, 800 horsepower, maybe 900 horsepower, I'm not sure, I think it's 800 uh, Challenger out here in South Carolina. So go say hi to her and see if she wants to get a picture. Denzo, so you actually run cars mm -hmm. and yes, you have sir. a seven car, so you have a little more room up top? Yes, sir. Nice meeting you, man. Thanks for watching the channel. And uh, yeah, man, where are you rolling to now? Uh, right here to the BMW. Is plane. it all Beamer? That's what you're moving a lot? Nice. How does that work? You just get there early in the morning, they have they load you up quick? So I'm an independent contractor okay. uh, under United Road. Okay. And it's just basically I whip Toledo down here, drop the load, and then they find me a load in the area. Okay. And then I come back and I'm going to Oklahoma City and then okay. whatever's in the area. So you take them, they take them out there. What do you come back with? Uh, just whatever I have. Whatever you can get. Okay, so you, just, you take out Beamers and you come back with just uh, random smorgasbord. Yes, sir. That's how it works, guys. So that's the car hauling business. Nice meeting you, man. Thanks for explaining that to us. Take care, brother. We did meet up with Wendy, the only jailbreak in South Carolina. But I, I brought my, I don't have a named her yet, but I brought Mr. Mrs. Hell Kitty over beauty. there. The beauty. beauty. Uh, the white Hellcats are finally reunited. I told her I'd bring it someday to take a picture. So we'll get a picture, but thanks for showing here. it to us there again. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So that was awesome seeing you today, man. Safe travels out to Oklahoma, buddy. And Wendy, we finally met up. I don't bring the Hellcat out far much, you know. I just leave it around the, the house, kind of back and forth to the store or wherever. So it was nice to bring it out here and unite it with the jailbreak. So, all right, back to Packar Financial, back on track. And so here we are at Packar Financial. What does Packar stand for? Pacific Car and Rail. Um, they are the father company of both Peterbilt. Uh, and <clears throat> Kenworth, sorry. So oh, a lot of these trucks are going to be T680s, which is a great truck, a little bit more expensive than you're going to have uh, from like an International Pro Star or a, even a Volvo 670 or a 780 uh, Western Star can be expensive, but typically not more than like the 680 or the 579. 579 is probably going to be the Peterbilt most expensive um which there's three of them right four of them right there for old walmart trucks gonna be the most expensive uh aero truck you're gonna be able to grab uh, unless you get like a decked out volvo and that leads me to something else let's talk about volvo for a second um great truck that's the first truck i ever bought uh, it was made from i want to say 06 or 07 all the way up until i want to say a 17 or 18 was the same body style, same interior, same everything. So it means you're gonna be able to find parts very easily if it was that long of a run of the same truck. The Volvo motor, let's talk about that. It's also gonna be green, like the Detroit. Um, the network is pretty big, but you're gonna to have to have find like a specific Volvo um, independent shop that works on them, which are, are far few between, or a Volvo dealer. So 
Any Volvo dealer, though, will work on a Cummins because the Cummins motor is available in the Volvo. So that's where it comes into play. The Volvo is a great motor, but they have their own quirkiness, and like the injector cups. So I'm getting into a whole different thing about the motor itself. That if you want to be able to have the biggest network, you want to go Detroit or Cummins because most of every shop out here works on them. So that's why I say that. I don't knock the Volvo motor. It is a great motor. It's actually a very powerful motor and a fuel efficient motor. But when something goes wrong, if you're going to be out here and you're running it for half a million miles, the parts network and the network of places that are going to work on it is going to be a little bit smaller than a Detroit or a Cummins motor, if that makes sense. So, And Caterpillar is a whole different thing than I made anymore, so it's kind of the same lines of, of Volvo, where there's not too many shops that work on them. There are, but there aren't, if you know what I mean. Like, there's guys that just die hard work on Caterpillars, and you got to find those shops. A lot of these shops, like I guarantee this one right here, probably doesn't even work on Caterpillar. They're probably just Detroit and Cummins and uh, Max Force because it's a car, so. But I don't think they even work on them here. I think this is just uh, strictly financial. I've actually never been here. So we're gonna get in here and check, talk to people, check it out. Probably check out a 680 if we can find one that is open, like the one right in front of us. It's actually a pretty color and it has an APU on it. So let's check that out. There we go, 680 with a very unique color. And right there is an APU. Um, you can see a little box behind it. Uh, it's a competitor of my, my buddy's a green APU, but that's what you're going to look for. You're going to look for that little box. And that is what uh, is another little diesel motor that pulls off your diesel tank and runs your truck. But pretty truck. So you'll see T680. Very roomy inside. Um, good looking truck. And this is probably the flagship aero truck for um, Kenworth. I doubt it's going to be open, but we'll check. And if you ever see that little blue cap, you see a little tank on the side of the 3D9s of the bigger trucks. Yeah, she's locked. Um, that's going to be telling you the truck has DEF. That's another thing we're going to talk about is the emission system so yeah see how it has a box on the back it has an apu um emission systems in these trucks can make or break you so you're going to want to stay away from trucks that are 2006 7 8 9 10 11 going into 2012 because that's when emissions was first getting kind of out there was getting pushed by the government so they were figuring out the systems they were not all the way tuned in i would say so you're gonna have some problems with those motors and being choked up and not really having the best of uh emission systems so egr was a big thing exhaust gas um regulation i believe it was i don't know what egr i know it's exhaust gas but i don't know if it's regulator or what it is but that's what it does that was on the early motors um and then it came into the whole def um diesel exhaust fluid and that's what that little green or blue cap is and diesel particle filter, DPF, is what's gonna be having to be changed a lot. It pretty much is taking the ash out of the exhaust and uh, trying to keep it out of the environment. So, but those systems really, uh, these are all locked, I guess, um, choke up your truck. So you're gonna wanna try to stay away from those years, those early years, the 07s to 2012s. Uh, my Volvo actually was a 2012. Um, it did have diesel particle filters. And I kept up maintenance on it. You could kind of do little things here and there to clean it out and keep it keep it going. But um, I would, if I could do it all over again, I would have got like a 2014 or 15 or newer. And now that it's later, it's five, four years since I bought that truck, those trucks would be cheaper. I bought that Volvo for $30,000 uh, at Ryder Truck Sales. So you're gonna wanna try these, find these lease companies like Penske. I don't know, know so much about Penske, Penske, but Ryder's a great company. A lot of these other companies like Club Cars, where my truck came from, um, the golf car company down in Augusta, Georgia, it matters where they were too. It matters where the truck was from. If it's from Southeast, if it's from the Midwest, Northeast, you're gonna get a lot of rust. Um, think about those things when you're looking at where the truck has spent most of its life. But my truck was out here in the South and it was $30,000. It was a Cummins motor, it was a 10 speed transmission. And uh, they're gonna, we'll talk to them inside here a little bit about financing, hopefully. They're gonna want a good amount of down payment. Uh, it was like 30% down. So I had to put like 9,600 something dollars down. Um, I sold my personal truck just to do that, so. That was four, almost five years ago. So now it's even more inflation. I am probably can't really get a great truck for $30,000 more at a dealership. You're gonna be spending about 50 or more probably. Um, so think about that when you're looking at these trucks. But Facebook Marketplace can be your friend. We'll talk about that in a second. I'll go through Facebook Marketplace and stuff that I would look at as well as uh, truck paper, kind of the things I would click off to filter down to kind of give yourself a, um, a better search where you're not just wasting your time. And one more truck we're gonna talk about is the Freightliner. Awesome truck, one of the most popular trucks out there, made here in North Carolina. Uh, runs a lot of Detroit motors, but their DEF, DPF system, their emission systems, is called a one box, and you wanna try and stay away from it. 
because if it goes out, it's about $10,000 and rising. $11,000, $12,000 just to replace because it's, it's, they call it one boss because it's like an all encompassed system for their uh, regulations of, or their um, emissions. So the other systems, you can kind of piece them, not piece them together, but there's the particle filter, there's different sensors, different things that you would go out and you refix them. But if the one box goes out and you have to replace the whole thing, you're looking at $10,000. So that's the only downfall I have from Freightliner. I've actually never driven one. I've never been in one with a whatever, but I've heard horror stories about the one box. So that's why I would stay away from the Freightliner or make sure it's brand new or has a warranty on it or, or anything else. And there's other ways to go about emissions. We don't really talk about those and discuss them, but if that's something you're doing, um, yeah, just know that Freightliner has probably the most expensive uh, emission system out there. So have that in mind when you're uh, when you're looking at the truck. But just check out these guys talk about financing a little bit on all this inventory. And inventory has come up. It's 2022 right now when this video is filmed. We're right at the height of the truck market where trucks were a bajillion dollars. And it's been about three or four months now that they're really coming down. So I think that truck's running or maybe his APU's just running. Yeah, his APU just runs. So cool thing about green APU, kind of like this W9 or not W9, T680 right now, you can hear that motor running, that's the APU. And so with the batteries drop below on a, a green APU, uh, I think it's 12.5, they'll charge for an hour. So that's what this thing's probably doing. Just refreshing the, the batteries and giving it a, a recharge. So before we walk on in here, this is exit 78 off of uh, 85 in South Carolina, heading towards North Carolina. Let's check out uh, truck paper and um, we'll check out Facebook Marketplace a little bit. Just kind of what I would look for, the searches I would do, and you can kind of expand on that and do your own. So let's start with Facebook Marketplace. A uh, great place to find kind of private sellers, get the best deals, somebody that's just going uh, out of business or trying something new, and I'll type in Volvo with a Cummins to start with. You can also just type in Volvo 670 or 780 or 860. Uh, that's a nice one, but it's an 08, so that emissions is gonna be on the won't have the DEF, but it'll have the EGR. So we we'll ask them about being rebuilt, anything like that. Uh, looks like he's selling a trailer too, a reefer. Uh, so 45,000, we'll look in the description, see if that's for both or what. Uh, 65 for both. So 45 just for the truck, it looks like. 565,000 miles. Uh, doesn't really say if it's been rebuilt or not. It's the number one question you're gonna ask. Uh, it does say salvage title. So that's another thing. Your, your banks will not finance that salvage title. You think about that um, when you're trying to finance. And like traditional credit unions and these kind of banks typically won't finance these. I use C.H. Brown out of uh, Wyoming. So there's 165,000 Volvo, dollar Volvo right there. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to find a specific equipment company that finances uh, heavy equipment, commercial trucks and stuff. And they're when the market's great, they're a little bit easier to lend. But when the market starts crashing, they start uh, being a little bit stricter on their lending. So just keep calling, keep finding different companies and uh, see what they want for a down payment. All right, 2014, that's a pretty, pretty good year. Uh, it's a big truck, too. It's a, and it is a manual, but it does not say if he has a rebuild or not. So it's the number one question I would ask right there. But that's a good truck right there. 10 speed with the Cummins. And a 485 horsepower is actually pretty good. The, the 450 was the standard, pretty much, for those trucks. If you ever see one with 400 horsepower, try to stay away from that. It's kind of underpowered. They can tune it up, but... It's not really meant to do that, so. All right, now with 680, we're just sitting right there. We'll look at that one. As an APU, has that black box on the back of it. Uh, as the MX-13, though, that's the Max Force motor. And 800,000 miles, it is ready for a rebuild, and it has a salvage title, so I would pass on that one. Hard pass. Pretty looking truck, but a hard pass. Going to be uh, nothing but problems for you going down the road. All right, $75,000, 64 there's a 07 W900. That's the truck that I have. I didn't see if it was 87. Oh, Studio Sleeper, exact same truck I have, but that's a Caterpillar motor. If you see a yellow motor, um, it says the engine was just rebuilt in 2019, so 48 months. Yeah, you're uh, one more year of, uh, and it has an APU. So that's a pretty decent truck, but then again, it's not a good fuel mileage truck. And right now, fuel is through the roof. So my truck is uh, not getting the fuel mileage I used to get my Volvo. My Volvo was getting eight miles per gallon. My, uh, W900 is getting about seven if I'm lucky. So about six and a half usually. So yeah, 680 is a great truck, a little more pricey. Volvo, the International is gonna be a uh, more entry level, cheaper truck. Um, let's see, International and then ProStar is the most uh, popular one. There's also one called LT, which is the newer one, but ProStar is probably the best deal you're gonna get out there for a drivetrain. They do have some electrical problems, so make sure they haven't cut through all the dash and added a bunch of calm or whatever, uh, 
uh, ELD stuff and just rip through the wires. Make sure that oh, there's not too many dummy lights on that thing when you're uh, getting into it. $32,000 is decent for a 2015. Does fleet maintain, doesn't say what kind of motors in it. Um, I would, that's the number thing I would ask in, on that one. Any paperwork on any kind of services, new head, anything like that. Oh, Roy, let's keep looking. Because just a new head for these Cummins motors is about $6,000 now, just for the head. Uh, that's the top of the motor if you don't know much about motors. There's a Cascadia, so that's the one with the one box. So 2015, I know for a fact it has that one box DEF system, so just be wary of that. It does have a Cummins motor that has a lot of miles ready for a rebuild, so you can talk them down that price even more, get it in a 25 range, because you know you're going to be spending 30000 rebuilding that motor. Okay, and then we'll go to truck paper. Just kind of teach you how to look through these. You kind of look saw what I'm looking for, uh, but this is what you do. You go heavy duty trucks, you go sleeper trucks, and then you can kind of go through the filters. So you're not just looking at everything. We'll just start with international. Go to that Pro Star. It's the most number of trucks that are for sale. There's LT above it. Well, LT actually has more. Um, we'll go Pro Star, and we'll just go down to motor. And I choose Cummins. You can choose Cummins, Detroit, and Caterpillar. But I don't think Cat ever went or Detroit ever went in the international. But I'm not 100% sure on that. So, yeah, and we'll just do like a year range. 2013, the emissions were kind of getting better to 2018 before the price started going up through the roof even more. And, yeah, that's what kind of search uh, stuff you can do. You can really filter it out. You can go into maps and um, just look through the trucks. There's a bunch of pro stars out there. And the pro truck smart or truck whatever uh, paper is going to have more dealerships than private sellers. And there's a map for you, kind of just see where they're at. There's not any right here in South Carolina around me, but there's one in Charlotte, there's one in Savannah. Um, and they pop up every now and then. So just keep looking through them. This looks like about 60 grand they're trying to get for these things. And it's a buyer's market right now. So you can negotiate the heck out of them. And that's another thing. Think about the market. Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Buy your truck at the right time. And if you're still running company right now, or you're just thinking about getting in trucking, you can start buying a truck. Just don't make it active. Don't put your IRP registration on it. Just um, uh, get the truck and start paying on it if you want, if you have the means to do that and get ready for a good market. All right. I hope that helps you guys. So that is kind of how to navigate marketplace and truck uh, paper. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff out there that you can go through um, to look for trucks, but those are the main two that I would use. Uh, before we walk in here and talk a little bit about what they're looking for in financing in these trucks right here, let's talk about motors, guys. So if I was coming out here and I was looking at a truck, um, I did an older video about pulling the valve cover, that cover that said Cummins on it with my truck in the, in the beginning of today. Um, and underneath that is where that oil is flowing through. That Shell Rotella T5 is what's flowing through my truck and what happened is a bunch of friction in there on a cam. So let's talk about that. Uh, we actually have a valve cover that we took off of Hey Guy Diesel in Griffin, Georgia. We'll go through that right here. So pulling the valve cover, guys. This is a valve cover right here. It's got a big old gasket on it that sticks with it. You can replace that too. But what you are trying to look at is where right here. These little lobes right here, you want to get a, there's a little bit of different coloration right there. A little bit of lines on them. That's not bad. If you see a big bad line or any kind of pitting in it, you're also gonna wanna look at your cam, which is down below. So you really wanna have a light and you wanna have this thing, even if you can spin it over a little bit, um, either manually or bump the, nah, I want, you can bump the starter if you want just to get different sides, but it'll spit a little oil, just do it quickly. But you really are focusing on all these lobes, guys. If you don't have someone to inspect your truck for you, um, that is gonna be a big job, like an 871, which is a twin cam, because this only has one cam right here. The 871 has two. It's like a $14,000 cam job, guys, so they're pretty expensive. The cam alone on this one, I think, is about 1500 now. When I did mine, it was like 1300 So the camshaft is what, what pushes the lobes that opens the valves as these push down. So that's what you wanna check, guys. Injectors go right here in the middle. Uh, this one's actually getting injector cups redone, so that's why they're coming out right now. And uh, yeah, that's what you're gonna look for. But that's one thing, it's just 10 bolts all the way around the outside, actually eight bolts, eight bolts right here. Take those out, it comes out this way. You gotta take your EGR to, uh, tube off, but you definitely wanna do that if you're going to a private seller, even a small dealership, and you think it's the best truck for you, um, check those cam lobes, guys. You gotta make sure these are nice and shiny and don't have too many big pittings on them. That one has a little bit of line, but not bad. I hope that helps you guys. And we'll talk about the rest of the stuff that you can look for on the trucks. And to add the whole camshaft idea, these are all cams that are in the camshaft, camshaft graveyard, along with some rockers. This is what actually pushes down. They're all rusted because they've been out in the, in the water. But 
you can see some of them are pretty smooth still. Uh, that one has a big line on it right there in the middle. It was being worn out. This right here, guys, this truck was running. Look at that. That, I can't believe that truck was still running. Like this one too. It's a whole different cam. See how it's all worn in there? They just get worn out over time. But man, that's what you look for. If you see something like that, run away. <laughs> Even if you see a little bit of a indention or some of that pitting, that's where it's just been slapping off. Not good, but these are all cams, guys. That's what you're going to be looking for. That is an extreme case where you're not even going to buy that truck. Uh, but if it has a little bit of a line, like these are the parts that go in the head. This is what holds it. These are the lobes that lift the valves, push that rockers down. So these big ones are going to be spinning inside the uh, actual head. But I hope that gives you guys a little bit of a, like that line right there. Now it's kind of starting to be a wear part or that wear mark right there. Not bad, but that's the beginning of it. And if you see something like that, your truck shouldn't be really running that great. Mine was not even that bad. Mine was not even that bad where I had a lobe on it. It was just kind of getting worn down in the middle, but it bent that valve. So hope that helps you guys understand what cams do. And that's the main thing you're looking for is that. And then the other side of the rocker, this right here. Look for those two things. And uh, best of luck with that. And I hope that helps you guys understand what's going on underneath that valve cover. And just simply pulling that off can mean the world to look, kind of knowing what the wear and tear is like on that motor before you make that big purchase on that uh, truck. So that's a big thing you want to try to do. Even here at the dealership, if, if it gets serious about the truck, maybe have the mechanic do that for you or have them, yeah, just be there for that. If you can at all get that done or just get pictures, a video, anything that they can take on their time to show you those rollers on those cams because you can see they can still be running truck and that's that's a whole lot of work right there six thousand dollar head new cam is about fifteen hundred dollars now um all the rollers if there's a messed up all, everything like that just keeps to add up so it could be a ten thousand fifteen thousand dollar job just for that head so i think that in mind let's go talk to some people How are you doing? Good, how are you? It was that time of year. I talked to Chris for a little bit. He said he didn't really want to, he said he would sit down with me and talk to me later, but I don't have the like, time right now. I'm doing this video because my trailer's in the shop. But um, you had some good points he brought up. It's the end of the year. They're busy as heck right now. Tax write-offs, guys. A lot of people write off car, uh, trucks and get their taxes, three years of depreciation, um, buy a new inventory to kind of save on the tax money that they would spend. It's, it's how the tax code works. So that's what he's talking about. But he was also talking about like early pay, payoff. Um, balloon payments, stuff like that. If you go with different smaller banks sometimes, make sure you ask those questions. Um, you don't want to be stuck in a loan, the truck blows up and you're trying to trade it and they don't have that as an available option for you. So all those kind of things come into play. Uh, he's a great guy, Chris. He was saying, I, I get paid salary. I don't get any kind of commission. So it doesn't matter if you buy a truck or not. If you come here, uh, talk to them, but they have a heck of a lot of inventory guys. I tried to ask them for like a price sheet and he says it's changing so quickly. Don't really have that, but they got a Pete right here. We got T680s everywhere, Walmart trucks, all that kind of stuff. So it might be a good place to start. Wish I could have got more with him on camera, but um, he just didn't want to. He said, we'll set up another time later on the day, but I, I'm a busy guy. I have a limited time with a trailer being down right now. I could do this video and I've been wanting to do this video for a while. So hope that helps you guys. Hope that teaches you a little bit of what to look under the hood for, the motors to look for. Um, and banking means a lot. CH Brown did not have an early buyout. They don't have an early buyout. Uh, but just really look at those terms, but you're going to be looking, he didn't know what the down payment would be. It depends on your credit, but 30% is about average, maybe even more than that these days because they want to protect themselves. If they, uh, if you go out of business, which a lot of new authorities do, or at least on, uh, drivers, this truck goes down, you didn't save the money to repair some big, big things. Uh, they want to be able to re recoup their investment and have that extra cushion to repair it or sell it at auction, that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a business for them too. So. They're here to help you. And if you don't have the means to buy a $30,000 truck by yourself and you're coming to get a $100,000, $200,000 truck, you might have to finance So, I hope this video gives you a little bit of pointers because when I first started this four years ago, I had zero pointers, guys. I had no, is the Cummins a good motor? Is the Detroit a good motor? Which motor to stay away from? Which motor to go with? All that kind of stuff. So hope it gives you a little bit of insight. And uh, any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear you guys' stuff. And we will get our trailer back on the road, hopefully tomorrow for a video then and until then god bless you and i'll see you on the next one